what you've been seeking about the team in, in the last couple of games? Well, um, we've won the games, but you know you can't make a, a mountain out of a molehill. You know things look great or bad depending upon wins or losses in this game, and you know a lot of what we have to do, we have to do on the merit of what's being done out there, not just the score. So you know it's good to win a game. Still a lot of move, movement to make as far as uh, coming back to the way we have to play. Phil, when this, when this month started, did you look at the schedule and say we should go? No, so no. do that at all? Why not? We we have short term things. We we go real short, four four games in a week or five games in a week. We just go from that standpoint. We don't go about and we we talk about gaining some momentum. And when you do, you can put together a win streak. But you know, not about you know what a month might bring or anything like that. So this is a week where you play what four games this week. You play four next week, something like that. So a lot of games. Is that good for this team? Do they need to play more games. I think so. I think so. Uh, you know, we, we have obviously back-to-backs, and you know, some of our guys are just doing personal kind of physical work. Mars getting work on his shoulder, which was you know a residual effect from last night's fall. And Andrews, he fell on the shoulder. He fell on the. He fell on his elbow, elbow but you know, the, the shoulder took the blow. You know, Andrews working on his free throws, and you know, things like that. You know, just uh, the the starters that have played heavy minutes are working on things that have to help their game and. You know, these other guys are getting the exercise and work to kind of sharpen their skills. Andrew's free throws, is that something that's going to come along with his legs getting stronger? He's a very good can... He's a very good free throw shooter. He's just out of rhythm right now. You know, I think he can play. I think he'll be able to play. It's not enough to probably keep him out of playing, but it's, it's a problematic kind of thing that's going to be effective, affecting him for a while. How do you anticipate that affecting his activity? No, it should affect his activity. You know, the only thing it's obviously something that you know, is about reaching, shooting might be affected because of the length of a shot, you know, and the follow through. But, you know, he's, he's going to be all right behind it. Is that why you took him out of the game late? Was that part of the reason why? Well, we needed shooters. We, we needed some shooters in the ball game. And, you know, one level I had him at center because of the ability to go small against a small group. But then when we got down to the point where we needed some shooting in the ball game, you know, I had. And take him out. So as a team, I think you guys have 12 technical fouls in the last eight games. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about that as a coach? I'm never happy about a technical, you know, whether it's you're trying to you know, get a pointer across or not. I mean, even even with coaches, uh, you know, try and make it a point about referee. I, I don't think it's you know part of what we want to do in the game. It's part of good sportsmanship, but. Uh, I didn't think Powell deserved the technical for what happened on the floor in that situation. I told Bob I thought he's a little overzealous about calling that one. But um, you know, we, we really have to measure ourselves as far as what our temperament is. And, you know, Fish felt he got fouled on a screen roll situation where a guy stepped in and he was going to you know, make a point of it. And, uh, you know, at that point in the game, might be a little too critical. Was that been reflective of just the team's struggle? Frustration? Or has it been more of just them still adapting to the rule? No, I, I think it's just frustration. Well, Coach, it was last week one of the more crazier weeks with all the issues that you had to deal with? Uh, yeah, it, I mean, it was, there was a lot of stuff. I mean, it wasn't, it wasn't crazy in that standpoint. It just seemed like a lot of things just kind of boiled up. But you know those things will happen. Uh, you know, in you know, in the course of a season, you're going to have a lot of a variety of things that come out of just uh, you know day-to-day -day living that you know gets you know magnified or exemplified or you know whatever exaggerated. And, and uh, you know, I thought our guys are fine. I think our team's handled it okay. Uh, I'm not happy about the way we played the game uh, the other night. But you know, we're starting to be a little more. Unified, I think, is a group. Bill, the Sun started out with that unconventional lineup with Gortat before trying to match up with uh, Bonnie right. and Soul. Right. Can that ever play into your hands if a team's trying to switch up what they do just for, for terms of cohesion? Well, we'd like it. I mean, we'd like that to happen because it takes the team out of what they do. But the other effect is, is that we got trapped into playing a defense against you know the big guys, and as a result, gave up a lot of three-pointers in the third, second quarter, in the big second quarter because of it. And we didn't make the adjustments ourselves, so you know it had their, it balanced out, so to speak. Uh, who's who's going to talk about DJ tomorrow when he gets his ring? Will you be the guy going out there saying, "What a great guy you are, DJ. We miss you." 
and we love you? I don't know. I mean, Mitch and I were just uh, sitting over there, and it wasn't mentioned, but of course we do have to present him with a ring, and, uh, and it's a pleasure to do so. So who's going to do the... Uh, I, think our, I think our captain should yes. do that. I think it's one of the things one of our captains should do, and I think it's... You know, DJ was an effective player for us. And people, you like to make fun of it, but it'd be news. That was not making fun. I was just making <laughs> a statement. Yes, he was. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you know, Thanks, in, in, in the early part of the year when we had an injury to Powell and he was out, you know, 14 games or whatever it was, 13 games at the start of the season last year, DJ played an important role for us. And, uh, you know, done some things for us I liked a lot. Uh, but, you know, with our rotation, he didn't get a lot of time. And, you know, he's looking to advance his career, and you know, we knew that he had to move on to do that. Derek, um, just getting back to the PAL thing, do you anticipate you guys will petition the league? Uh, we, I couldn't even look at it on tape. They, you know, a great network like ESPN didn't even have it on tape, so we couldn't even see what actually transpired. <laughs> he works for ESPN, too. So, well, well, we know how good ESPN so is. There's still a lot, of, a lot of work to go. You, you're seeing some encouraging signs. Without a doubt. Uh, you know, the activity levels come up. Our ability to react to the ball, get some steals, you know, that's come up the level. So those are things that are positive. How important was it for Ron to have a defensive Real, Real important for him to go in and, and you know, contribute at that time in the game. He's wanted to, and, you know, there's been some games I put him back in because of matchups, but that, for some reason, I felt it was the right time to put him back in the ball game because, you know, we hadn't been doing what I wanted to get accomplished out there. And, uh, you know, Kobe trusted him with a good shot, and he made it. So the new uh, defensive system that you guys are trying It's to not do, that new. Or I guess tweaks to it. Okay. <laughs> How do you foresee it uh, specifically addressing what New Orleans does or coming into play against New Orleans? Well, we were trying to keep guys in front of us. And, um, you know, with Chris Paul, it's probably one of the <clears throat> effective things maybe to keep him in front of us. Um, a lot of the screen rolls, the guys are able to break through, cross over, you know, penetrate the either the middle or get through the baseline anyway. Sure. So that's what we're trying to avoid. You know, get the ball stopped and get the play stopped so that we can then get ourselves in rotation. But it's not new. No. I mean, it, why, why have, I guess, either guys like Andrew or Kobe or whoever sort of describing it as new? Is there, I mean, is there anything philosophically different about it, do you think? You, you know, it requires... Um, requires a, a somewhat of a change in, in, in rotation, but the same concepts. We're still working with the same concepts that we've had all before. So trying to get guys to think of the concepts as being the same is, is the, the ticket, not that, oh, we have to do something new, you know. So they seemed to overwhelm New Orleans last week with size just early. Can they do anything personnel-wise to adjust to that inside, or is it just trying to pack the paint more than they were able to? I thought one of the keys in that game was West getting injured. Obviously, he wasn't really injured that bad, but he had to go off the court. It took away some of the potency that they had, and the answer that they might have to our big lineup is to go to West and move him on the outside. He's an effective player within 20 feet, which is difficult for Power or, or Drew to go out there and play at that level, although they can. How about defensively, though, um, for the Hornets? It's, that's going to be a problem. You know, that's what we wanted to present for him, and I, th I think we got some things done. I thought it was Andrew's kind of coming out situation for him, and hopefully it can, uh, we can get back to it.